keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Hello and welcome. My name is Stefan Achenbach and I'm here with Dr. Troy LeBounty of Cornell Medical College from New York to speak about his study, Diagnostic Accuracy of Coronary CT Angiography Interpreted on an iPhone. Hello, Dr. LeBounty. Hello, Dr. Achenbach. It's Thanks for coming. And can you just briefly let us know what you did in your study? Sure. We, uh, as, as technology has improved, it's now possible to view medical imaging uh, studies on handheld devices. So we wanted to examine the diagnostic performance uh, doing uh, such interpretations. So we looked at the diagnostic accuracy of coronary CT angiography as viewed on an iPhone device uh, in comparison to quantitative coronary angi angiography to detect significant coronary mm -hmm. disease. Uh, we used an Apple iPhone 3G device and dedicated uh, medical imaging software from MimVista. So that's just the general iPhone that anybody can buy? It is. I actually use my own iPhone mm -hmm. for the project. So how many st patients did you study in this, in this evaluation? We looked at 102 patients mm -hmm. uh, from the multicenter accuracy study. Uh, these were all symptomatic patients who had no known history of coronary disease. And we compared the patients between CT angiography as viewed on an iPhone device to quantitative coronary angiography. And the goal was to investigate the accuracy that can be achieved on this handheld device? Yes, yes. Can you give us a brief demonstration of, of what the interpretation on this device would typically look like? Sure, absolutely. So uh, I pull up the, a list of patients that I've downloaded mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the iPhone device, and I have currently about 20 patients on this iPhone device. And I just select the study that I would like to view. And I start with the axial image. By using two fingers and moving my two fingers up and down or left and right, I can change the window width and level. I'll double tap to zoom in on the area I want to select. Move my finger to pan the image. And then by putting my finger on the right side of the screen, I can scroll through the axial images. And I'll scroll up to demonstrate some mild disease in the proximal left anterior descending artery with a calcified lesion. By using my fingers to pinch together, I zoom the image out. By pinching away, I zoom the image in. So reading is limited currently to looking at the axial slices, but I take that sufficient if you have enough experience to interpret that data? Yes, I mean, in my clinical practice, I typically start with axial slices mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, the current version of the software expands to uh, the ability to look at coronal mm -hmm. and sagittal views as well, but the, view, the version that I used was limited to axial slices. And what did you find? How, how was accuracy using this device as compared to a standard workstation? Surprisingly, it was very good. Uh, we had 100% sensitivity, 100% negative predictive value, and 78% specificity to detect coronary disease at a 50% threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were quite surprised at how the results came out, given the fact that we're using a very small screen, we're using only axial slices. Uh, we also, as part of our analyses, looked at the same patients uh, on a dedicated mm -hmm. uh, three-dimensional workstation. We found identical sensitivity, identical negative predictive value, but we did see a trend to a higher specificity using a three-dimensional workstation. So less false positive readings um, if you use a blown up big, big workstation. Yeah. So what are potential problems um, if, if you think about doing this on a small screen like this? Uh, are there any potential problems that you have to be aware of? Absolutely. I mean, uh, major limitations, as you point out, the small size of the screen. One has to pan around uh, several times just to trace one coronary artery because it'll go off the screen because mm -hmm. you're zoomed in on it. Uh, also, uh, currently, as we mentioned, it's predominantly axial slices. Mm -hmm. One cannot do multiplanar reformats, three-dimensional reconstruction. I think in the future, though, there's things that would be very helpful. Is data transfer a problem? How long does it take to get a data set onto your iPhone and how many data sets can it hold? At one point, I had all 102 studies loaded on my single iPhone device, and this is the entire data set mm -hmm. using only the 75% uh, uh, R to R interval. And how, mu uh, how much time does it take to get the data on the iPhone? Less than five minutes per study mm -hmm. over a Wi-Fi network. Okay. So how do you see this used in the future? Where do you think this takes us? Where do you think this works out in clinical practice? I think it's very exciting because I think does two things. One is it improves point of care. So if we want to demonstrate this to patients, whether at their bedside or in the clinic when they are visiting us, or even demonstrate it on rounds to residents and fellows, mm -hmm. I think we can pull it up and instantly show uh, people uh, the actually visually what the coronary arteries mm -hmm. look like. And the, the second part is that uh, in the 
future, it would be very nice to be able to interpret studies away from these three-dimensional workstations, which are limited in number. And often, uh, many hospitals do not have uh, trained physicians who read coronary CT angiograms 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Well, the small screen would probably be a limitation. Can you think about devices that have larger screens that can also be used for that? Especially if you think about demonstration, you know, this tiny stamp-sized screen yes. might be a limitation. Absolutely, and I think I think that's a direction uh, things need to go. I think maybe this maybe something with a larger screen, such as a possible iPad device, mm -hmm. or there's several other competitors, uh, uh, would be suitable for viewing images without the need to pan around as much as this requires, given the small screen. Well, then, this all sounds very interesting. Thank you very much for your interview, and thank you much, very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the attention.